Hey friends, welcome to the Lab Elementary Online. My name is Andrew and we've got an awesome time planned for you. Stay tuned. All right. When was the last time you got completely tricked? Maybe it was a super cool magic trick that you saw on YouTube or a crazy fact you read but found out it wasn't true. We've all held, had moments when we got completely and utterly tricked. So to test out our trick radar, we're gonna play a game. On the screen, you're gonna see two items that look exactly the same, but one is real and one is fake. You have to choose which one you think is fake. Keep count of how many you get right. Are you ready? All right, let's go. Wow, those were pretty tough. I, I can't believe how many of those were fake, but ah, I'm super smart. I got them all right, you know it. All right, so how many did you guys get right? Nice, that's is almost as good as me. I don't think I would have known any of them for sure if the video hadn't shown me the answers though. Knowing whether or not these things are real can be tough, especially when there are a lot of things claiming to be real that aren't. It can be easy to be led astray, and that's what happened in our Bible story today. The nation of Israel was led astray by a cruel king and queen named Ahab and Jezebel. They were bad news. They hated God and convinced people to worship a false god named Baal instead. This made God very upset. 
So he sent a prophet named Elijah who through an epic showdown reminded Israel who the one true God is. Let's check out our story and I'll see you back here soon. King Ahab and his evil queen Jezebel have led Israel astray by worshiping other gods. The land is gripped by a terrible drought. While the prophets of God have been under siege by Jezebel's orders to kill them, the worship of Baal has flourished. Elijah, God's prophet, demands to see Ahab. Ahab went to meet Elijah, and when he saw him, Ahab shouted, There you are, the biggest troublemaker in Israel! Elijah answered, You're the troublemaker, not me. You and your family have disobeyed the Lord's commands by worshipping Baal. Call together everyone from Israel and have them meet me on Mount Carmel. Be sure to bring along the 450 prophets of Baal. Ahab got everyone together. Then they went to meet Elijah on Mount Carmel. Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you try to have things both ways? If the Lord is God, worship him. But if Baal is God, worship him. The people did not say a word. Then Elijah continued, I am the Lord's only prophet, but Baal has 450 prophets. Bring us two bulls. Baal's prophets can take one of them, kill it, and cut it into pieces. Then they can put the meat on the wood without lighting the fire. I will do the same thing with the other bull, and I won't light a fire under it either. The prophets of Baal will pray to their God, and I will pray to the Lord. The one who answers by starting the fire is God. That's a good idea, everyone agreed. Elijah said to Baal's prophets, there are more of you, so you go first. Pick out a bull and get it ready, but don't light the fire. Then pray to your God. They chose their bull. Then they got it ready and prayed to Baal all morning, asking him to start the fire. They danced around the altar and shouted, Answer us, Baal! But there was no answer. At noon, Elijah began making fun of them. Pray louder, he said. Baal must be a god. Maybe he's daydreaming or, or using the toilet or, or traveling somewhere. Or maybe he's asleep and you have to wake him up. The prophets kept shouting louder and louder and they kept it up all afternoon. But there was no answer of any kind. Elijah told everyone to gather around him while he repaired the Lord's altar. Then he used 12 stones to build an altar in honor of the Lord. Each stone stood for one of the tribes of Israel, which was the name the Lord had given to their ancestor Jacob. Elijah dug a ditch around the altar, large enough to hold about 13 quarts. He placed the wood on the altar. Then they cut the bull into pieces and laid the meat on the wood. He told the people, fill four large jars with water and pour it over the meat and the wood. After they did this, he told them to do it two more times. They did exactly as he said, until finally the water ran down the altar and filled the ditch. When it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah prayed, Our Lord, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Now prove that you are the God of this nation and that I, your servant, have done this at your command. Please answer me so that these people will know that you are the Lord God and that you will turn their hearts back to you. The Lord immediately sent fire and it burned up the sacrifice, the wood and the stones. It scorched the ground everywhere around the altar and dried up every drop of water in the ditch. When the crowd saw what had happened, they all bowed down and shouted, The Lord is God! The Lord is God! Yes, it's me, 
Pyro Pete. The name's Pyro Pete, and I'm an expert in all things fire. All right, think of a fire thing. I've done it, lit myself on fire, been there. Zero burns, all right? What if I told you that I could right now light my hand on fire and I'd be completely fine? Would you believe it? Sounds unlikely. But so does one man defeating an entire group of 450 prophets. Now, allow me to show you. In the story we just watched, Elijah challenged the group of prophets of Baal to an altar off where they both made altars and prayed to their gods and whoever's god answered with fire was the winner. Now, the 400 prophets of Baal prayed to their gods all day and all night and nothing, not even a spark, and even get a little bit warm. Nobody got sunburned. Then Elijah comes along. He sets up his altar like this. And he thought, what do I gotta do? So he placed 12 stones and some wood on it. Let's say these are stones and wood. All right, and did anybody remember what he did next? That's right. He told his servants not once, not twice, but three times to pour water on the altar. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know how much you know about fire. Water and fire do not mix. And then he said, he prayed to God, he said, oh God, of Abraham, of Isaac, of Israel, let this day be known that you are God in Israel and answer me that your people may know that you are God. And so he waited for a second, but not too long. Because then all of a sudden, God sent fire down from the sky and burnt the entire offering. <laughs> Well, would you look at that? I lit my hand on fire, and it's completely fine. I think I was able to burn up the chemical before I had time to reach my skin. The solution kept me protected. It was like God kept Elijah protected, even though he was one man up against 450 false prophets and a king that wanted him dead. Elijah stood strong and victorious. The next time you're facing someone tough, remember this story and ask God to help you stand strong too, just like Elijah did. Well, that's all for me. I'm Pyro Pete, and you guys have a flaming lit rest of your day. I'm going to the hospital now. Yikes, that was an epic story. Elijah was one man up against 450 false prophets. The odds were totally stacked against him, but Elijah was firm in his faith. He didn't know what was gonna happen, whether God was gonna come through or not, but he chose to trust him anyways and act in faith. And that's a true demonstration of strength right there. He knew who his God was, and he knew his God was on his side, and that his God was the one true God, and so he was enough. We can stand strong like Elijah, knowing that God is on our side. We may not know all the answers. We may not know what to do at times, but we can know that God is always with us and that our actions make a difference. He gives us strength to stand strong when we need it. And we can have trust that no situation is ever bigger than he is. All right, let's pray and ask God to help us stand strong for him this week. Dear God, thank you so much for this Bible story. Thank you so much that it teaches us about how powerful, how big, and how strong you are. And it lets us know that we can always trust you. God, I pray that when we're feeling unsure, when we're feeling nervous, that you remind us of that, that we can trust you in that situation. In your name I pray, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at The Lab Elementary Online. We can't wait to see you back here next week or at one of our three in-person campuses. We'd love to meet you. Well. Have a great rest of your week. See ya. Bye.